Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about the holiday romances that are coming out in 2024. <music> friends so you might want to grab a snack grab a drink because I have 30 holiday romances to talk to you about and that's not even all of the ones I found those are just the ones that I chose to spotlight in this video so this is likely going to be a long one especially since I plan to proceed with this video as I do any of my other new release videos in that if I can get away with reading one or two sentences of a blurb I will otherwise I will be reading the synopses of each of these books to give you an idea of what they are about even though you know they are holiday romances and so they're probably all going to be fairly similar overall but I want to do my due diligence now, I know you might be asking yourself, Brittany, it is only September. Why on earth are you talking about holiday releases in September? Well, you might be surprised to find that I would say a solid majority of the holiday romances that I'm going to talk to you about today come out on September 24th. And so because of that, I wanted to try to get this video out before all of these new releases were actually out. And so that's why we are here today. So like I said, grab a snack, grab a drink. We are going to dive right into it with all of the September 24th releases. And the very first one that I want to talk to you about actually seems kind of fun. It's called the the Most Wonderful Crime of the Year by Ali Carter. This says, the bridge is out, the phones are down, and the most famous mystery writer in the world just disappeared out of a locked room two days before Christmas. Meet Maggie Chase and Ethan Wyatt. She's the new queen of the cozy mystery. He's Mr. Big Time Thriller Guy. She hates his guts. He thinks her name is Marcy, no matter how many times she's told him otherwise. But when they both accept a cryptic invitation to attend a Christmas house party at the English estate of a reclusive fan, neither is expecting their host to be the most powerful author in the world, Eleanor Ashley, Duchess of Death herself. That night, the the weather turns and the next morning Eleanor is gone. She vanished from a locked room and Maggie has to wonder, is Eleanor in danger or is it all some kind of test? Is Ethan the competition or is he the only person in that snowbound mansion she can trust? As the snow gets deeper and the stakes get higher, every clue will bring Maggie and Ethan closer to the truth and each other because this Christmas these two rivals are going to have to become allies and maybe more if they have any hope of saving Eleanor. So that actually sounds like it's going to be a mixture of things. It's going to be a cute, fun, kind of like a cozy locked room mystery and then it's going to be of course set during the holiday season and there's going to be a romantic element to it. So I'm very intrigued by this genre blend. I thought this sounded like a lot of fun and so I thought it would be a good book to open this segment with. Next I have All I Want Is You by Fallon Ballard. All Jessica has ever wanted is her own happily ever after but until that happens she spends her days as a small-time romance writer penning satisfying happily ever afters to soothe the heartache left by her ex-boyfriend Nick, also a romance writer and now her biggest rival, who has found success writing love stories without happy endings. So when their professional obligations bring them to a remote inn a few days before Christmas, they're a little more than peeved, especially when they get trapped sharing a room in a snowstorm, but what's more fitting for two romantic writers in a slump. Realizing the friction between them might be the only cure for their writer's block, they decide to turn their frustration into fiction and the pages start flying. But will Jess's heart soar too? Nick is the last guy on earth she should love, but what if he is really all she wants for Christmas? So this sounds like it's going to be a second chance romance. You kind of have exes who are now kind of enemies and rivals. They're going to get stuck together, so you have that forced proximity aspect, and it sounds like they are probably going to get back together. So this again isn't going to be another cute holiday romance. And let's be real, these are all going to be cute holiday romances. So I probably don't have to keep saying that after every single one, but get another one coming out in September that I wanted to put on your radar. Next, we have the third Christmas collaboration from Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. It is their Christmas Notch series. And this is called A Jingle Bell Mingle. So I really don't want to say too much about this just in case there is potentially any spoilers for the first couple of books. But this says, what happens when there's no room at the inn and you and your potentially demonic cat become roommates with your grumpy one night stand. I don't know, we have like a grumpy sunshine thing going here. We have a demonic cat. I'm kind of sold on this one. I didn't read any of the other two books in this series. I'm not really the biggest holiday romance person, but the books in this series always have seemed so, so much fun. And I know a lot of people have really enjoyed them. So if you have read the first two books in the series, or if you just enjoy these two authors, this definitely might be one that you want to pick up coming out on September 24th. Next, we have the newest Christmas release from Jenny Bayliss called Kiss Me at Christmas. Jenny Bayliss is a pretty well-known kind of Christmas romance writer, so I'm not necessarily surprised to see another one coming out from her this year. Christmas can officially get stuffed because Harriet Smith is not feeling bright and merry this year. She hasn't for a while, so when her college-age daughter opts for Manhattan's Winter Wonderland instead of Christmas at home, Harriet finds herself seeking solace in a wine-soaked one-night stand. But how Harriet will spend the holidays is swiftly decided for her after she takes the fall for some students who break into the town's old winter theater. To get the students off the hook, the theater's elderly owner requests that Harriet direct the washed-out stage's final Christmas performance, and Harriet will do anything to help 
help the kids, even work with the owner's lawyer, who, as it turns out, is her less than impressed one night stand. Directing the play with him won't exactly change her life, but it might just reignite the Christmas spirit and remind her what makes life merry and bright again. All right, so we have another one night stand going on in here that's two in a row. I didn't know that was such a popular trope going on in holiday Christmas romances, but there you have it. Like I said, Jenny Bayless is pretty well known with her holiday romances, so if you have enjoyed her in the past, this is her newest release coming out soon. Next on the 24th, we have The Christmas Catch by Tony Shiloh. It says, benched with a career ending injury, NFL wide receiver Jaleel Walker is forced to return to his hometown of Peachwood Bay, Georgia during the holidays to heal despite his rocky relationship with his father. Nothing shocks him more than running into Lucille B.B. Gordon. B.B. Gordon came home to Peachwood Bay three years ago with a divorce certificate and her daughter. When Jaleel returns for the first time in eight years, all the memories of the past come rushing back. The connection between them is still strong, but Jaleel has no plans to stay in Peachwood and B.B. won't risk him leaving her again. As their hometown's Christmas festivities bring them together, Jaleel must decide if he's only home for the holidays or if the Christmas spirit that brought them together will last all through the year. So again, this sounds like it's going to be a second chance romance. These two were high school sweethearts. They're meeting up again for the first time in several years. Sparks are going to fly. This is definitely another one that has been kind of put on my radar. And so I'm interested to see what other people think about after they read it. Next, we have a book called A Home for the Holidays by Taylor Hahn. It says, for wedding singer Mel Hart, the holidays have always retained a certain magic. Her mother, Connie, always managed to pull off spectacular Santa hijinks that convinced Mel to keep believing in Santa way longer than other kids. Those moments meant everything to Mel because the rest of the year, life was unpredictable because of her mother's alcohol use. But two weeks before Christmas, Mel gets a call from the hospital. Her mother has died. Then a woman shows up on Mel's doorstep, claiming to be Connie's estranged best friend, promising to tell Mel a different narrative, one in which Connie was almost a famous country music star, if only a man hadn't gotten in the way. Instead of spending Christmas alone in her dead mother's house, Mel agrees to stay with Barb for the holidays, finding herself in the middle of Barb's complicated family and uncovering secrets while fighting an attraction to Barb's in the middle of a divorced son. As Christmas approaches, Mel reckons with how little she knew about her mother's past while re-examining her own future. A Home for the Holidays is a moving exploration of complicated grief, mother-daughter relationships, loving someone with addiction, and the redemptive power of opening one's heart to fall in love in all forms. This is a holiday romance that absolutely screams my name because this sounds like overall it's going to be a harder hitting narrative. You have a woman who is dealing with grief. She has recently lost her mother before the holidays and that comes with a lot of complicated feelings because even though she loved her mother and her mother made Christmas a magical time, her mother was also an alcoholic. And as somebody who has dealt with alcoholics in her family, that is definitely a hot button topic for me. But now it also sounds like she's going to be learning about a whole different side of her mother that she never knew. And it sounds like there's going to be a lot of complicated emotions going on here. So this is actually one that I might actually put on my radar to pick up because just the synopsis of that sounds right up my alley. Another fun one that I found was a book called Christmas in Spite of You by Casey Mills. Now this synopsis is pretty long. So I'm just going to read this blurb here that says a neat freak Scrooge and a Christmas loving ball of chaos must coexist for a week and the friction and separation that ensue make the most magical time of the year highly remarkable. So it definitely sounds like it's going to be a grumpy sunshine romance but make it Christmas where our grump is also a Scrooge and then you have our female main character who is not only the sunshine but she absolutely loves Christmas. It also sounds like there's going to be a forced proximity aspect here and this just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. This is another one that I'm interested to hear more about just because this seems like it's going to have a lot of those tropes that we love to see just in typical contemporary romances. This is definitely another one that I want to see out there. I want to see people talk about it and so I wanted it to be on your radar. Then we have a book called A Novel Christmas by Charity Shane. This is another one that has a longer synopsis so I'm going to read this blurb here that says a prominent romance author has a slump in her love life and book sales but a chance encounter with a hot firefighter helps her reignite her muse in this swoony holiday romance perfect for book romantics. So I think that this is now like the third book that I've mentioned already in this video that features a romance writer in some capacity and a romance writer in a slump no less. So that definitely seems like it is also a common trope to see in these holiday romances which is really interesting. This is an author that I have never heard of before so I don't know if this is her debut or not but this is just another cute sweet heartwarming Christmas novel that I wanted to make sure to put on your radar. Also on the 24th we have a book called Second Chance Christmas by Jaquel J. It says being known as the daughter of the Sageport town drunk always left Faith Stone defending her mother and herself. Her only solace was her boyfriend Rome. Even as a teenager Faith knew she wanted forever with Rome Atkins. Their small town, her mother's struggles, and everyone's opinions of their relationship couldn't hold them back forever. After graduation, they would put Sageport behind them and start a new life together. Prom night changed everything. 15 years later, Faith, now a divorced single parent, finds herself back in Sageport for the holidays. The memories and pain are still fresh, as if everything happened yesterday, especially when she runs into Rome, who never left Sageport. Also fresh are the unexpected lingering feelings they still harbor for each other. Do old wounds run too deep, or can the joy of Christmas provide enough healing power for a second chance love reunion? So this one sounds actually very, very similar to the one that I just talked about. Was it the Tony Shiloh book? So we have somebody returning to 
her hometown. She is divorced. She has a kid. She's reuniting with an old flame. Sparks are going to fly. So again, we have some second chance romances going on here. Old flames reigniting. So I'm definitely seeing what tropes are super popular for these holiday romance times. And then the last book that I have for September 24th is the newest release from Sarah Morgenthaler. She again is another very well known author within like the Christmas romance sphere. This one is called The Christmas You Found Me. And this says Sarah Morgenthaler is back with a heart mending contemporary romance featuring a single dad you'll fall for, a satisfying slow burn love affair, found family you'll root for, small town holiday magic, and all the quirky animals and snowy rustic scenes your heart desires. Okay, so how many tropes can you put into a blurb, right? You have a single dad romance, which we know is all the rage right now, especially after Elsie Silver's books. You have a slow burn love affair, which personally is right up my alley. You also have found family. That is a buzzword for a lot of people. And then you have small town holiday magic. And that's basically what we're all looking for, right? This definitely sounds like a Hallmark Christmas movie in a book. So if you are a fan of Sarah Morgenthaler, or if you just like the vibes of this one, which I think a lot of people are going to keep your eye out for this one. Moving on into October 1st, we actually have a new release from Ashley Herring Blake. So we have the first sapphic romance of this video, and that is called Make the Season Bright. It says it's been five years since Charlotte Donovan was ditched at the altar by her ex fiance, and she's doing more than okay. Sure, her single mother never checks in, but she has her string ensemble, the Rosalind Quartet, and her life in New York is a dream come true. As the holidays draw near, her ensemble mate Sloan persuades Charlotte and the rest of the quartet to spend Christmas with her family in Colorado. It is much cozier and quieter than Manhattan, and it would guarantee more practice time for the quartet's upcoming tour. But when Charlotte arrives, she discovers that Sloan's sister, Adele, also brought a friend home, and that friend is none other than her ex, Brighton. All Brighton Fairbrook wanted was to have the holliest, jolliest Christmas, and to forget that her band kicked her out. But instead, she's stuck pretending like she and her ex are strangers, which proves to be difficult when Sloan and Adele's mom signs all of them up for a series of Christmas dating events. Charlotte and Brighton are soon entrenched in horseback riding and cookie decorating, but Charlotte still won't talk to her. Brighton can hardly blame her after what she did. After a few days, however, things start to slip through. Memories, music, the way they used to play together, Brighton on guitar, Charlotte on her violin, and it all feels painfully familiar. But it's all in the past and nothing can melt the ice in their heart, right? So again, we have another second chance romance here. These exes are coming into forced contact, essentially, when they don't mean to. And it sounds like it's going to be an awkward good time. I know that there are a lot of people who really, really love Ashley Herring Blake's contemporary sapphic romances. And if that's the case, you might want to go ahead and give her holiday romance a try. Also on the first, we have another queer romance. This is called The Merriest Misters by Timothy Janofsky. This says it's the Santa Claus meets husband material. Patrick Hargrave and Quinn Muller have been married for less than a year, but their passionate romance is cracking under the pressures of domestic life and a cumbersome mortgage. That's until Christmas Eve when Patrick wakes Quinn up with, I think I've killed a man. Quinn realizes the burglar Patrick knocked out is none other than Mr. Claus himself, instructed by a harried elf to don the red suit and take the reins of the reindeer guided sleigh up on the roof. Quinn and Patrick work together to save Christmas. But as the sun rises on Christmas morning, the sleigh brings them back to the North Pole instead of New Jersey, and they're in for a massive shock. The couple must assume the roles of Santa Claus and the first ever Marius Mister, or Christmas will be canceled permanently. With Christmas and their marriage on the line, Patrick and Quinn agree to stay together for one year, but can running a toy shop together save their relationship? Or will Patrick and Quinn be stuffing coal in each other's stockings come next Christmas? Oh my gosh, that sounds so heartwarming, so sweet. I absolutely love the Santa Claus, so I'm really interested in this take on it. This is another one that is certainly on my radar. Another sapphic holiday romance coming out on the first is a book called Make My Wish Come True by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick. It says 12 days of fake dates, two holidays, one chance to convince everyone they're in love. Arden James is Hollywood's hottest teen actor. Infamously reckless, she's a constant in the tabloids. But when her messy reputation costs her an audition for her dream role, Arden and her publicist make up a lie to flip the script. Only for the lie to work, she'll have to head home for the holidays for the first time in four years. Caroline Beckett has spent those last four years shining up a stellar portfolio that will get her into a top journalism program and convincing herself she could not be less interested in what her former best friend and first crush has been up to since she left without a word. But when Arden suddenly shows up at her doorstep with the promise of a real byline in Cosmopolitan in exchange for a write-up on their secret romance and 12 snow-covered holidays in their Christmas-obsessed hometown, Caroline can't help but be tempted into playing along. It should be easy enough to stand each other for 12 days to make their dreams come true, but when old feelings start to bubble up, so do new holiday wishes that might just have Arden and Caroline falling faster than that Christmas Eve snow. So it sounds like these were former best friends, not former lovers, but it sounds like it's going to develop into a romantic relationship now. So another cute sapphic romance coming out. And the final release that I have for October 1st is a book called One Big Happy Family by Susan Mallory. Julie Parker's kids are her greatest gift. Still, she's not exactly heartbroken when they ask to skip a big Christmas. Her son Nick is taking a belated honeymoon with his bride Blair, while her daughter Dana will purge every reminder of the guy who dumped her. Again, Julie feels practically giddy for one-on-one -on -one holiday time with Heath, the much younger man she's secretly dating. But her plans go from cozy to chaotic when Nick and Dana plead for Christmas at the family cabin in memory of their late father, Julie's 
ex. She can't refuse even though she dreads their reactions to her new man when they realize she's been hiding him for months. As the guest list grows in surprising ways, from Blair's estranged mom to Heath's precocious children, Julie's secret is one of many to be unwrapped. Over this delightfully complicated and very funny Christmas, she'll discover that more really is merrier and that a big happy family can become bigger and happier if they let go of old hurts and open their hearts to love. So again, we have a situation that's going to have some messy, complicated family dynamics. You have a woman who has been dating a much younger man in secret. She has two grown children who are kind of wanting to go back to their family cabin to reminisce on their father who has passed away. And it sounds like there's going to be a lot of chaos, but a lot of heartwarming good time as well. So this one actually only just recently came on my radar and I thought it would be kind of perfect for that Christmas season. It's probably going to give you like those warm tingles that you're looking for by the end of it. Moving on into October 8th, the first one I have to talk to you about is a book called Christmas Eve Love Story by Ginny Baird. Annie Jones works hard designing windows for iconic New York City department store Lawson's Finest. So when her Christmas window display gets upended by some rambunctious kids on Christmas Eve, all too realistic store Santa gives Annie a little decorating tip on how to start over. With help from friendly security guard Braden Tate, Annie repairs the damage and heads home. But when she wakes the next morning, she's bewildered to find that it isn't Christmas Day at all, but Christmas Eve all over again. Trapped in a time loop, Annie doesn't know how she'll ever make it back to the present. Luckily, she has an infinite number of chances to get things right. As little everyday choices bring her closer to Brayden and to Christmas Day, Annie starts to picture what her new life, one full of friendship, love, and community, could look like. Okay, so we definitely have a Groundhog Day scenario in here. I know that Christina Lauren did that with In a Holidays, so if you like those tropes, if you liked In a Holidays, this might be one that you want to keep on your radar. A cute queer romance that is coming out on October 8th is a book called The Nightmare Before Kissmas by Sarah Roche. Nicholas Cole Claus used to love Christmas until his father, the reigning Santa, turned the holiday into a PR facade. Cole will do anything to escape the spectacle, including getting tangled in a drunken, supremely hot makeout session with a beautiful man behind a seedy bar one night. But the heir to Christmas is soon commanded to do his duty. He will marry his best friend Iris, the Easter princess, and his brother's not-so-secret crush, a situation that has disaster written all over it. Things go from bad to worse when a rival arrives to challenge Cole for the princess's hand, and Cole comes face to face with his mysterious behind-the-bar hottie, Hex, the Prince of Halloween. It's a fake competition between two holiday princes who can't keep their hands off each other over a marriage of convenience that no one wants, and it all leads to one of the sweetest, sexiest, messiest, most delightfully unforgettable love stories of the year. So this is definitely not your traditional holiday romance, right? It's definitely a take on the Nightmare Before Christmas. You have the Prince of Halloween, you have the Prince of Christmas. The Prince of Christmas is having to go into an arranged marriage that he does not want. Meanwhile, his own brother is the one that's in love with the woman that he's supposed to marry. So definitely messy, definitely crazy. And it also, of course, has those speculative elements because Santa is real in this one and the Prince of Halloween is real in this one. So that absolutely sounds like a delightful time. If you love The Nightmare Before Christmas, if you are a fan of romances in general, this should be one to pick up coming out on the 8th. Next, we have the first Hanukkah related romance of this video called Love You A Lot Key by Amanda Elliott. It says snow is falling and Abby Cohen is pissed. For one thing, her most annoying customer, Seth, has been coming into her cafe every morning with his sunshiny attitude, determined to break down her carefully constructed emotional walls. So we have like a reverse grumpy sunshine thing going here, I think. And as the only Jew on the tourism board of her Vermont town, Abby's been charged with planning their fledgling Hanukkah festival. Unfortunately, the local vendors don't understand that the story of Hanukkah cannot be told with a light up plastic figures from the nativity scene, even if the three wise men wore yarmulkes. Desperate for support, Abby puts out a call for help online and discovers she was wrong about being the only Jew within a hundred miles. There's one other, Seth. As it turns out, Seth's parents have been badgering him to bring a nice Jewish girlfriend home to New York City for Hanukkah. And if Abby can survive his incessant, irritatingly handsome smiles, he'll introduce her to all the vendors she needs to make the festival a success. But over latkes, donuts, and winter adventures in Manhattan, Abby begins to realize that her fake boyfriend and his family might just be igniting a flame in her own guarded heart. Oh my gosh, that sounds so incredibly sweet. It sounds like we're going to have somewhat of a fake dating situation here, but also, like I said, that reverse grumpy sunshine where he is the sunshine and she is the grump. This is another one that I could be tempted to put on my holiday TBR, but as of right now, the end of the year is kind of looking like a catch-up situation for me. I don't necessarily know if I will be reading any holiday themed reads during the end of the year, but some of these are like really warming my cold dead heart, y'all. This next one, I definitely want to feature because it says it's for fans of the holiday and I absolutely love that Christmas movie. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. This is also going to be a queer BIPOC relationship. It says, B. Tyler needs a break. In the bustling San Francisco tech community, no one ever seems to stand still, especially her perfect sister and business partner, Beth. So when her best friend suggests a getaway on the wildly popular house swap app, Vacate, B. decides a countryside retreat might be exactly what she needs. Clover Mills has had a year between losing her mother and making the complicated decision to leave her fiance. Sticking around the idyllic Christmas obsessed town of Salem, Ohio just doesn't feel right. So when she hears about Vacate, she jumps at the chance to spend the holidays in the unfamiliar city of San Francisco. Soon enough, B is living in Clover's cozy Salem cottage and Clover is living in B's sleek 
San Francisco apartment. As Clover can't seem to stop running into Bee's frustratingly gorgeous sister Beth, and Bee finds herself spending more and more time with Clover's ultra charming ex-fiance Knox, the two women realize that this Christmas they may just find what they were looking for and more. That does sound perfect for somebody who loves the holiday like I do. This is another one that I'm really interested in giving a try because this just sounds so perfect for the holiday season. I really like the sound of this one. Next I actually have a paranormal holiday romance. It is called Don't Kiss and Spell by Camilla Isley. Being a single witch at the holidays can be hard. The solution? Myla Bennett brews a love potion on Christmas Eve hoping to fall in love with the next man she sees. But instead of the charming date she imagined, Riley King, Salem's magical PD chief inquisitor, bursts through her door and arrests her for murder. That's rude. Now Myla has leapt out of the cauldron of holiday blues straight into the fire of Riley's handcuffs. It's instant hate between the witch and the dashingly infuriating wizard in uniform. But the potion has other plans. It sparks an unbidden, fiery attraction neither of them can resist. They'd want nothing other than to go their separate ways and let the effects of the potion fade. But when Mila, cleared of all charges, is sentenced to collaborate with Riley in solving the murder mystery, they have to ignore their off-the-charts chemistry and work together to crack the case. As Mila and Riley forcibly collaborate, they must also face off to the fact that somewhere between the puzzling of clues, mistletoe, and suspect interrogation, they might be falling in love. But can Mila settle for a love that comes from a potion and not the heart? As the investigation progresses, she wonders if a murder case is the only mystery she has to solve. So this is a cozy, magical rom-com. Definitely another genre blend going on here. We're seeing a lot of those right now. This is not something up my alley. I don't tend to love paranormal romances, and y'all know that I'm not really a big, huge, cutesy rom-com type of person, which is why I usually stay away from holiday romances. This is certainly one that I know a lot of people will get a kick out of, especially because it's got that witch magical dynamic going on in it. So this next one is another one that's touted as being for fans of the holiday, but also for fans of The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, and this is called The Holiday Honeymoon Switch by Julia McKay. Holly Beach and Ivy Casey are Barry the Body Besties. They're so in sync they even look alike. When Holly's fiance jilts her, leaving her in shock and with a non-refundable honeymoon, Holly commits Ivy to switch places. Ivy will go on the Hawaiian honeymoon her best friend can't bear to take alone, while Holly escapes to Ivy's rented Hudson Valley cabin to binge watch holiday movies and heal. But Holly's wallowing is interrupted when her rugged Airbnb host turns out to be her high school academic rival who's had a major glow up. Meanwhile, Ivy's now Hawaiian annual solo art retreat is upended when Holly's ex-fiance checks into the honeymoon suite with a new woman. Raging in bedless, the last thing Ivy expects is for the hot hotel bartender to come to her rescue. Against all odds, the Christmas might prove the most magical yet. All right, so that sounds a little bit messy, but you have two best friends. They kind of switch places, but not like switch places in one pretending to be the other. One takes the honeymoon of the person who was left at the altar. Meanwhile, the jilted woman who was left at the altar is trying to heal in a cozy Airbnb cabin. And it sounds like she's gonna fall in love with the Airbnb hose. I'm not sure that's a little bit cute. That's definitely an interesting take on the holiday. They're not necessarily like swapping homes, but they're going to switch where they're supposed to be for the holidays, essentially. And it sounds like both of them are going to get a love story again. So that is another really cute one. All right, moving on into October 15th, we have yet another notable holiday romance author, Emily Stone, who has a new release coming out on this date. It is called A Winter Wish. This says, when an unexpected inheritance forces two total opposites to work together, Lexi must decide if Theo is going to push her out or pull her in for the kiss of a lifetime in this heartwarming holiday novel from the author of Always in December and One Last Gift. I did read One Last Gift from Emily Stone and I remember having a decent time with it. There were some harder hitting elements in there. I would be willing to give her another shot at some point, but if you are a fan of Emily Stone, just keep in mind that she has this new release coming out on the 15th. Another queer holiday rom-com coming out on the 15th is a book called Most Wonderful by Georgia Clark. It says the holidays are fast approaching and the Belvedere sisters are a mess. Liz, a Hollywood showrunner and responsible eldest, has no idea how to follow up her hit show's first season or how to deal with her giant crush on its star, Violet Grace. Birdie turned her chronic middle child syndrome into a career as a stand-up comic, but since she spends more time wooing women than working on new material, she's facing one-hit wonder status, especially once she gets axed by her manager. And Rafi, a sensitive romantic and the baby golden boy, proposes to his co-worker girlfriend in front of their entire company, only to be turned down by the woman he thought was the love of his life. Born to three different fathers, the three adult children share one mother, famed actress and singer Babs Belvedere. Seeking direction in holiday cheer, all three siblings head up to their mother's house in the country, determined to swear off love and focus on themselves and their work. But the spirit of the season seems to have different plans for them, and their best intentions are quickly derailed in the most delightful and festive of ways. Emotional, smart, and sexy, this queer holiday rom-com celebrates love, family, and the wild creative life, perfect for fans of Emily Henry and Casey McQuiston. So this is another one that sounds like 
it's going to have some complicated messiness around to it. We have three siblings who are kind of lost in their lives and their career and they're returning home and they need some comfort, they need some family time, they need to work on themselves. And I guess each one of them potentially might get their own romance. I'm not entirely sure. But this was definitely a fun one that I wanted to mention here. Also on the 15th, Jacqueline Snow has her newest release called Christmas Sweater Weather. This one says, Charlotte Calhoun has avoided Hayden Porter, her older brother's sexy as sin best friend, ever since that mortifying night when he flat out rejected her. Fine. Except this Christmas season, they're thrown together at a snowy ski resort for her brother's bachelor party, complete with mistletoe, cozy fireplaces, and adjoining rooms. She can tell herself to get over Hayden, but holiday cheer is turning to holiday lust every time he is within 10 feet of her. Between being a full-time single father and his high-pressure college coaching job, a romantic relationship is off the table for Hayden, but he's fought his attraction to Charlotte for as long as he can. A one-night stand is starting to sound like a good idea, as long as her brother never finds out. But with two long weeks until the wedding, hiding their growing feelings is going to take a Christmas miracle. So this is the first one I think so far that features the brother's best friend trope. So that is definitely a popular trope in contemporary romance. So if that's a trope that you enjoy, this might be a holiday romance that you want to seek out. And then the last one that I have for the 15th is another Hanukkah romance. It's called Eight Nights to Win Her Heart by Mary White. It says Andy Williams is not looking forward to spending her first Hanukkah alone after her father's death. About to lose her job with her only prospect across the country for another work opportunity. She could use some chutzpah to make it through the eight nights alone. Leo Dens has had a crush on the girl across the hall from his apartment for years but has never had the courage to say anything until she drops her grocery bags and he notices her drugstore Hanukkah candles. Ready to take a chance outside of his comfort zone, Leo offers to join Andy on the first night sharing his dinner with her. As Andy and Leo fall for each other one night at a time and the clock ticks down on Andy's move, will the season of miracles light their way forward? All right so that's pretty simple overall but it sounds like we have our male main love interest who's kind of had a crush on Andy for a really long time and when he figures out that she's Jewish he offers to spend the first night of Hanukkah with her and then over the other seven days of Hanukkah they're going to kind of fall for each other. So another Hanukkah romance to put on your radar if you're looking for more of that Jewish representation. All right y'all we are almost there we are almost done I only have three releases to talk to you about two of which are coming out on October 22nd. The first is called The Christmas Cookie Wars by Eliza Evans. Melody Monroe will do anything to get her nine-year-old twin boys to muster up the holiday spirit especially since they lost their father the boys have started questioning the point of Christmas at all. When Melody learns the school's cookie committee has disbanded due to dissension in the top ranks she can't let the boys lose another ounce of Christmas joy so she decides to take over the cookie committee herself even if it means dealing with the infuriating school principal Jonathan Raxton. Soon a small argument turns into a town-wide bake-off between her and Jonathan and before she knows it Melody finds that her competitive spirits have turned romantic. Love isn't supposed to be in the recipe for Melody but with a little holiday magic she and Jonathan might just bake up something special. So cute simple definitely kind of like a rivals to lover situation but you also have a mother here who is having to deal with her twin boys losing holiday spirit after the death of their father so there definitely sounds like there's also going to be some grief approached in this as well so this is a cute one. All right I actually just looked at my battery and it's at 16 percent so we're going to see if I can get through these last two releases before the battery dies. This next one is called The Christmas Countdown from Holly Cassidy. It says from the author of The Christmas Wager comes a charming holiday rom-com about a young recently heartbroken woman who is tasked by her sister to complete advent calendar challenges and the lead up to Christmas to reignite her belief in herself the holidays and love again. Okay so we have a main character who is a little bit down maybe she's not believing in love so much anymore but she's given some advent calendar challenges which I actually think is a really fun idea where every single day instead of opening like a little gift in an advent calendar you open up a little challenge a little experience for yourself and then you have to go out and do it. So I actually think that's a really cute premise and I would be interested to know how Holly Cassidy approaches that one. And this last one is oddly enough coming out on October 30th that's kind of like a random day I'm not necessarily sure why October 30th but this seems like it's only going to be a Kindle release so keep that in mind but I did think it was really cute. It's called A Very Irish Christmas by Debbie Johnson. When New York born Cassie O'Hara decides to use the money her sassy Irish Nana Nora left in her will to book a month-long stay in a quaint country village she's expecting a cozy cottage, steak and ale pie, and plenty of Christmas cheer. Instead she gets a droughty disaster covered in dust, a temperamental stray dog, and two devastatingly handsome men vying for her attention. There's Charles the dashing English aristocrat with an enormous manor house and a heart of gold and Ryan a curly-haired Irish handyman with a past he won't talk about and an accent that makes her weak in the knees. Girl I get you. When Charles enlists Cassie's event planning expertise to save his family estate she finds herself working shoulder to shoulder with Ryan breathing new life into Bancroft Manor. As village life weaves its spell Cassie uncovers some intriguing secrets about Nana Nora's past with her return ticket looming and her heart pulling her in unexpected directions. Can Cassie find the love and belonging Nana Nora always wanted for her? Okay so it sounds like there's going to be a little bit of a love triangle in this one and I think that's the first that we've seen so far out of all of these books. I love the idea of a Christmas set in Ireland. That sounds like absolute perfection to me. Well I didn't make it y'all. My camera likes to go from like 15% to no percent in like a second. So I 
think I was just kind of wrapping up my thoughts on A Very Irish Christmas. I really like the idea of Christmas set in Ireland. As I mentioned, I don't believe that this is going to have a release outside of Kindle. So if you are a big Kindle user, this might be one that you want to keep your eye out for. But this was just a cute, sweet one that I wanted to mention as the final book in this video. All right, everyone. And that is it. We made it. We did it. We got through all of the books that I wanted to talk about in this video. I would be interested to know, do you enjoy reading Christmas holiday related books during the holiday season? Or does the holiday season invoke different vibes for you? Are there different kind of books that you like to read? I know a lot of people, once it starts to hit winter, like to dive more deeply into heavy, chunky fantasies. So let me know what your reading tastes are for the winter holiday season. If any of these struck your interest, please let me know which ones you plan to pick up. I would love to know. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some type of holiday emoji. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.